want to talk about Man United, Man United, Man United. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Right. All of this, um, all of this talk about change and restructuring of the club and murder madness, and they got rid of Ralph Ragnick because they went to streamline things and why the blah blah blah. Trust the process. In the end, at the point of speaking right now, um, we still sign nobody. Despite our disastrous last season, despite how woefully we ended the season, despite how terribly we played, the lack of squad harmony, all these leaks, the terrible, you know, structure of the club, the terrible management, the terrible ownership, the flipping damage that Oligan Solskjaer left that club and team in, we still haven't signed anybody. And this is even on top of, or off the back of, loads of big senior players such as Paul Pogba and co deciding to leave the club. No one has been signed yet. And if that makes things, you know, that's one thing that's maybe a bit difficult to kind of deal with. The other thing now is kind of difficult to deal with is this news kind of, that kind of broke over the weekend. So most people have been paying attention. This shouldn't be no surprise, but it has now been confirmed by, I guess, Christian Ronaldo's um, representatives that he wants to leave United amid concerns of transfers and trophies. Now, I've been following this guy online on Twitter called Z. I don't know what his actual full name is, but it's some guy called Z who's kind of an, an insider, let's say. He doesn't call himself a journalist, but he seems like he has his finger on the pulse and knows the people that matter, I guess, within Cristiano Ronaldo's kind of close circle, maybe in terms of his agent, his management group, whatever, I don't really know. <coughs> but he broke this news a while ago that Ronaldo and his agent were basically having conversations with the club or conversations with their team internally, especially towards the end of the season, and saying, hey, we need to kind of focus and look at the bigger picture here because this club isn't what the club... Because I think the thing with United, unless you're not watching us week in, week out, you just assume that we're doing okay. It's only going to take a couple of transfer windows, um, a decent manager, and then suddenly we're going to be back where we need to be, right? That's what most people assume. And you also assume that we're owned by owners who would react to a bad season because I think most big clubs... Unless you don't have the money for it, but most big clubs, what happens is that if you have a really bad season, you usually react or usually usually respond by making a big marquee signing early on. You maybe get rid of a manager, you maybe get rid of a player to send a message, but you do something as a response to kind of the bad season to kind of give the fans um, hope that you understand what's going on to alleviate some fears, to maybe send a message to suitable players that you want, bloody blah, blah, blah. blah. But when Ronaldo came to the club, I think he realised, finally, especially in the his team, that the United that he left is not the same one that he came back to. And it's quite clear to him, especially when you watched our, our season, our games towards the end of the season, that this club is not going to be successful, I don't think, for the next 10 years, personally for me, as a United fan. And I've mostly said that, not because of the managers or whatnot, but mostly because of the owners. Unless we get different owners, unless the Glazers sell up and we're owned by different people who care about sport and success over commercial success, we are never going to be successful because they set the template, they set the precedent, they set the overarching goals and whatnot and what matters and what doesn't. And until that changes, we're not going to go anywhere anytime soon. I think Ronaldo realised that once he was at the club full time, he saw, okay, cool, this isn't going to go well anytime soon. And him being 37, 38 now, and still, at, I think, the top of his game in terms of being able to score goals, but still with not a lot of time to do that at that kind of level, because he looks like he doesn't, he doesn't want to play in the MLS. It doesn't look like he wants to go play in flipping um, Southeast Asia. It doesn't look like he wants to go play in the Middle East. If that's the case, he has to be very careful about the places that he stays and where he plays at. So if you sign a two-year contract with the club, you can maybe afford to break the two years and go to another club and maybe try and win yourself another league title, maybe a domestic cup, maybe challenge for the Champions League, just to have a good highlight reel and add to your goals tally. All those things that really matter to Rick Cristiano Ronaldo, of course, if you can win it, that's an incredible, incredible bonus, especially at his age, especially to prove the doubt was wrong. But... Can we honestly, hand on heart, say, outside of the Champions League, can Man United do anything this season coming up? No. Do I see Man United win the Europa League? No. Do I see us challenging for the Premier League next season? No. Do I see us even challenging for domestic clubs? No. If that's the case, Ronaldo has no business being at United. And he probably should have never signed a two-year deal. He probably should have always signed a one-year deal under the proviso of like, hey, I'm coming here for one year. It's going to be a good time to kind of say, 
you know, um, thank you to the fans who've always supported me singing my name at the club all the time. Um, it will kind of give me an opportunity to kind of prove my worth again on a bigger stage and one of the hardest leagues in the world at that age. I'll score the goals for a dysfunctional team. I'll show that I can drag this team kicking and screaming maybe into top four, maybe get them close. And if I don't, cool, it's been fun and I'll bounce. Right, you get your shirt sales money in through the through the flipping cash register. I get to increase my profile, remind people what, I'm, what time I'm on, and we keep moving. And the fact that it didn't happen is a is a weird, but still, I think the two year contract should have been an indication to most fans that this was the time he was always on. But it's also interesting to me because it feels like he's also in a weird way running the club. In the same way, do you remember the stories that came out prior? where they were like, oh, he was questioning Harry Maguire's captaincy and why he was captain, which was clashing with him in the change room. And again, as much as I'm not a fan of Harry Maguire, I kind of do think that it's unfair if you do make Harry Maguire captain and you sign a player of Christian Ronaldo's calibre and you don't maybe give him a heads up. You maybe just let him deal with it. He's only in the dressing room. You don't remind Ronaldo that Maguire's a captain in terms of simmering down, but you effectively create a problem in the dressing room, especially for the captain, who was also kind of, you know, one of England's kind of marquee players. So that's obviously not a good thing. And then on top of that, it felt like just in general, though his kind of attitude towards Ralph Ragnick, his attitude towards the club in general, how he would kind of demonstrate and remonstrate on the pitch if he didn't get the correct pass, it just felt like this is a man who clearly felt like he was above the club that he came back to. He kind of felt like this club's a joke, everyone around me is fucking loser, and I'm going to keep reminding him every day. And I feel like this saga now that's going to be unfolding in the next week or so because um, all the senior players, I think, come back to training tomorrow. So for the most part, I think there's only been uh, some youngsters playing in training and obviously people will come back on loan but everybody basically comes back on monday so if that's the case and he doesn't come back on monday or if he does come back on monday and reiterate that he does want out because we're not signing any players it'll be interesting if all of a sudden man united didn't announce three back-to-back -back signings in a week because that will clearly show where the power is at the club and i think that's a major problem which is why i say we're going to be successful because top clubs don't let one player no matter, no matter how good they are dictate what they do to not to this level unless you're a psg and you want mbappe to stay and you give him some dog shit flipping title just for the sake of it but you don't do you don't let one player dictate what you want to do you should have an overarching goal and a plan in terms of where you want a club to go and how you want to take it but it shouldn't be up to one player to decide and it looks like it is up to one player to decide at the moment but anyway, the article from sky sports is as follows the 37 year old uh, feels the urge to win even more in the twilight of his career but it's understood to feel that he may not be possible at Old Trafford next season the 21 campaign was a, it was the fifth in the successes in which United fell to win a trophy Ronaldo is also understood to be concerned that United are yet to make an improvement to the squad and in the current transfer window 13 players left the club in the summer but not one yet has yet to arrive so for one of the worst seasons ever in history we've let go of 13 players but we were, haven't signed one so you can understand where another trepidation will come from. And again, I agree with what he's said, but I just think in principle, I just can't be having one player, you know, telling us who we should sign and when should we sign them and giving us deadlines and shit. That's fucking nuts. But anyway, it continues. Ronaldo respects United a lot, especially the fans, and is said to be in love with the club. <laughs> yeah, sure. And this coming season will be the first in his career in which he will not play Champions League football if he stays at United. The Portugal international has never played in the Europa League, which United will be in next season, and last played in his predecessor of the UEFA Cup when he was at Sport in Lisbon in 20, 2020, Jesus, 2002 to 03 season. Which should be a surprise too. If you're a United fan, did you really expect to see Ronaldo in a United kit, you know, with the Europa League flipping anthem on flipping BT Sport? Really? I don't think so. Um, it was always kind of a little bit of a misnomer, that one. But while Ronaldo is keen to, to leave United, um, United are keen to uh, are taking a stance that he's not for sale and expecting to see out the remainder of his contract with his buyers in summer 2023. Skyspots has contacted um, Man United for comment. So, yeah. I think it's absolutely incredible. Um, I think it's absolutely incredible uh, that this is happening, but also a reminder of just how far we've fallen as a club. Our worst possible season ever. Um, we don't react in the way that you'd think a top club would react. There isn't really a big statement from the club, really. We haven't really heard anything from the club. They've not really come out and said, hey, here's our goals going forward, reiterating what we want to do as a club, what we want to do as a team, 
what we're going to do as an organization. It just doesn't, it feels a bit flat. We got rid of Ralph Ragnick, even though he was the person that was spearhead that changed because he was getting a bit too mouthy and saying stuff out loud that people didn't want to hear. You know, you had Rio Ferdinand basically telling him in no way, shape, in, in no uncertain terms, before he got fired, he was probably going to get fired. And in the end, he did get fired. Um, and it's just a complete horror show, really, right? A complete horror show. So if that's the case, I understand why somebody as ambitious as Ronaldo would want to leave. But again, like I said prior, I'm just not comfortable with one person dictating to a club what they should do in terms of the transfer market, when they should sign players, at what heads, you know, at what speed they should go, at, they should be completing these deals, the caliber of the players. It's just, it's, it's just insane to me. It feels that like completely insane. But again, for a club that's rudderless with no direction, it makes complete sense because what else are they gonna do? Do you know what I mean? They have no other option but to listen to him because he is the only person at the club who's actually won major trophies, who actually played for some of the biggest clubs in the world, who's played at the highest stages in the world. So it makes sense why everyone's kind of quivering in their boots about it. But Monday's going to be very interesting going forward in terms of what they do. Personally, if it was me, and if I was United, I could never have a 37-year-old player, no matter how good he is, leading the line next season for a team at United, especially considering what we're going through. But I would decide one way or the other. Do you stick or twist with him? Do you decide to stick with him, give him the armband, tell him to lead the line, buy some younger players to support him in the round to be dynamic and stuff, and then tell Maguire to simmer down and shut up and just kind of write off his transfer, even though you know Ronaldo's going to leave before Maguire does? So you have to decide on that, on that regard. Or you just go out and just kind of start from a completely clean slate. A complete slate, sorry. You get rid of the Marshalls, you get rid of the Shaws, the Pogbas, all these players, and you just start from absolute zero, which I think is what Ragnik wanted to do, right? He wanted to start from scratch, <coughs> which is why he said he needed 10 players to come in. But United don't want to do that because they don't like selling players. So that's the case. You kind of put yourself in a rock and a hard place. And now you basically have to kind of do half and half you kind of have to stick with Ronaldo even though you're not sticking with him because he's only here for another year and you kind of have to play or you kind of have to kind of put your, bury your head in the sand and pretend like I'm Harry Maguire and Ronaldo thing is, is going to go away which it isn't going to go away because clearly the fans hate Maguire but they love Ronaldo and then Maguire's got the armband and they all hate him so naturally it's going to cause a division regardless and Maguire tends to make way more mistakes per game than Ronaldo does or mistakes that people seem to care about more so I don't know so it's just it's just a complete shit of a situation I'm not really looking forward to the next season no I'm, I'm looking forward to next season in terms of our playing style I actually want to see if it's capable for a coach because we all think Ericsson Hogg is a great coach he takes training he's actually got a style of play He's a bit of a disciplinarian. I actually want to see if it's possible for a coach to come in and whip the guys that we have in and now squad at the moment into shape. Are they redeemable? That's what I want to see with my own eyes. Um, and I want to see if there's an improvement in our style of play, in our intensity, in our fitness, in our pressing, all that good stuff, in our ball possession, in our pass selection, in our crossing ability, our footballing IQ. Are, is there a demonstrable change? And if there's a ceiling, fair enough, but can I see an improvement from last season? Fine. And on top of that, if there's some good football to watch, I would like that as well. But in terms of honours, in terms of trophies, in terms of challenging, in terms of all the drama stuff, I could do without it. I really could care less because it's not going to happen. No, it's going to happen in terms of drama, but in terms of trophies, we're not going to get anywhere close. You don't just suddenly turn, you know, a ship that's flipping heading from an iceberg that we are around in one second. Do you know what I mean? It takes a lot of work and I feel like at the moment, people in the club are pulling in different directions. Some people are trying to protect their jobs. Some people are trying to highlight that it wasn't me. Some people are just trying to appease the owner. Some people are trying to appease the fans some people are being neutral players are sabotaging it just feels like there's so many people putting different directions that i just feel like the only way this is going to change going forward the only way for united is if we have different owners i don't see any other future for united where we're successful without new owners it doesn't happen if we if we've been in 10 plus years of purgatory with these guys now just imagine what it's going to be like for the next 10 plus years no manager can save us no player we the there is no messiah coming down to turn us into a beast again we need systematic change root and stem you know change and we're not going to get that with the same owners we're not the glades are the glades i've said before are maybe top five worst owners in the history of the game have to be up there the 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 flipping 
it should be like a you should be up for a war crime for what they've done to United as a club from where they've taken it um, to where it is now at the moment it's just absolutely heinous and this is for somebody that again as much as the dividends piss me off they could be making way more money off the club if they actually cared about sporting success that's the absolutely mad thing about it they could actually make way more money off this club if they actually cared about how successful we were on the pitch as opposed to commercially but you know inept owners are always going to be inept in it so it is what it is